All right. Thanks so much, Vanessa. Well, February is American Heart Month, and according to the American Heart Association, nearly half of all adults in the U.S. have some form of heart or blood vessel disease. Here to tell us more about heart disease is cardiologist Robert Segal. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. We for had me. so many questions for you. We were just talking. Um, what? Who is at risk for heart disease? So. Um, Really, the good news and the bad news is that everyone's at risk for heart disease. Mm -hmm. If you have a heart you're and, at it's, risk. and it's beating, you're at risk. Yeah. So some people are at higher risk for heart disease, uh, genetic predispositions, like children who have uh, uh, parents who've had heart disease put themselves at higher risk. Uh, lifestyle choices, uh, you know, smokers, you drink too much alcohol. If you suffer from obesity, lack of physical activity, mm. high cholesterol, high blood pressure, um, all put you at risk, and diabetics. So can you get tested for this, and what are those symptoms that could lead you to say, hey, doc, I think there's something happening here? Okay, so the prevention is the key mm -hmm. to uh, detection. So preventing heart disease and hypertension, really you have to focus it on long, your long-term um, uh, ability to look at what you're putting into your body. Um, in terms of the testing, it could start very simple or get a little more sophisticated. The game changer for us over the last 20 years has always been looking at tests such as cholesterol, mm -hmm. which have been great and a very simple way to look at if you're at risk. Checking your blood pressure, getting a monitor to put on your arm, uh, you know, at a local pharmacy, get buying a monitor and putting it on your arm to see if you're at risk. Also can tell you if you have high blood pressure or not. But really, tests like the coronary calcium score that we tell our patients in our practice, if you're a man above the age of 40, a woman above the age of 50, postmenopausal, to go get this score and really assess how much buildup of, pl of plaque is sitting in the arteries so you can go to your doctor and make an informed decision about your health. So do you just go to your primary and say, I want this test? Okay, so again, uh, I'm, I'm an MD. You're an MD too. If you go on Google and you just want to assess your risk, mm. okay, it's really very important for patients to feel empowered and take control of their health care. So yes, you can go to your PCP and ask them, how do I check my heart? Mm. Well, e tests like EKGs, stress tests, echocardiograms are very important. But really what's happened in the last 10 to 15 years is getting the coronary calcium score to assess whether the, there's built up of plaque, and plaque is basically the substances that, uh, fat, cholesterol, that build up in the arteries that can really tell you if you're at risk for a heart attack or not. To answer your second question regarding symptoms. Mm. So, you know, as it relates to symptoms, you know, we all worried about the word heart attack. Mm -hmm. And it's a common misconception that the word attack, that the pain is gonna be sudden, yeah, sudden. and intense. But it's really a little bit of a misnomer because in most of us... There could be subtle signs. Subtle signs. That you just don't pay attention to. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So the chest pain, you know, you, you think about the chest pain being left-sided, in the middle of the chest. What kind of chest pain is it? Is it squeezing tight, discomfort? Where is it radiating mm. to? Is it traveling to the arms, most usually the left arm, to the back, to the neck, to the, to the jaw? Yeah. And other symptoms like lightheadedness, mm. dizziness, shortness of breath, nausea, uh, an overwhelming sense of anxiety can also make you feel like you're having a heart attack. All symptoms not to ignore right. because you know you can't see what's going on in there and it's the silent killer as they say. Dr. Segal, thank you so much. You're very welcome.